guys, welcome to another episode of the MVC Youth Podcast. And today we'll be discussing media and the effect it has on people, I guess, just mm. on everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a topic that I guess I am really invested in. I would say that I'm a very creative person. Or no, I'm not a creative person. I'm a fan of creative people. <laughs> Let's make that clear. I'm a fan of creative people. So I like movies, TV shows, music and all that sort of stuff. I, like I really enjoy. Um, but I guess before we get into that, Marvel released their, f- their final phase. Well, not their final phase, but they released their final film, final Avengers film. What are your thoughts on it? <laughs> Well, it was three hours. <laughs> three hours too long, in my opinion. Oh, yikes. <laughs> no, well, in contrast, in that case, I actually really enjoyed it. It was, um, I actually heard someone else's opinion on it today, and I kind of agree with them. It was, it wasn't, it, for me at least, it didn't drag the whole three hours, except for the parts where you had to go to the toilet because it was three hours long. And, you know, because of spoilers, we watched it in cinema. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I, you know, I probably wouldn't have waited anyway, but. Um, I yeah no, I enjoyed I enjoyed seeing it in cinema. I I held out. I did, didn't leave to go to the toilet. Unlike my mate, <laughs> he, <laughs> he missed the part where they were they were about to go off to their mission. Oh um, yeah. And we won't do any spoilers, I don't think. So we'll just <laughs> keep yeah. it. That. Even though it has been out for two weeks. Yeah. At, the, at this moment, it's been out for two weeks. If you haven't seen it, then you deserve to get spoilers. Actually, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's actually side question. <laughs> okay. Sorry. 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 Yeah. <laughs> On this topic. How long can it be before you can like, you know, spoilers galore? Like we can just talk about it as much as we want. Um, so I follow a lot of like film um, groups on Facebook and like pages to like on Facebook and stuff. And they always have a rule of one week. So like one week and then if there's any spoilers within that week of release of like major films, they will like ban or like delete comments and stuff like that yeah um but i don't know i mean like i feel like two two weeks is long enough i mean yeah. if, if you're invested in if like if you're getting upset about avengers spoilers you would have already seen it by now that's right so well, you should have at least yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean i watched it the day it was released i don't know it was it wasn't as... I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, except for Spider-Man. I really enjoy that. Oh, we're the same. Yeah. Um, I got Spider-Man on my YouTube jumper. <laughs> In case you didn't know. What a cool guy. <laughs> Look at me. Um, but yeah, so, like, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't it was that good, in my opinion. Uh, Infinity War was better. I think... I felt like... I, I felt like there were uh, quite a few plot holes in this new one that frustrated me and I was really frustrated with the what is it the time travel I just realized I may have sport a little bit but like I said it's two weeks if you haven't seen it already then it doesn't matter at this point it's been longer I think oh has it I think so oh yeah Either around, way, it's around, been a while. It's been yeah, a while. it's been out long enough where even the actors have spoiled <laughs> bits and pieces on camera. So for sure, whatever. Yeah. But I have recently watched um, a movie directed by Jonah Hill, mm-hmm. who is the same guy from Superbad, Wolf of Wall Street, Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street, and those are the only ones I can think of on the top of my off the top of my head. Yeah. But he, yeah, he this is his first. I think it's his first film that he directed, and he did it with a group of i don't know what they're like a collective of people that love skating um making films all this sort of stuff and it's called illegal illegal civilization and so he filmed it with those guys and it was actually really really good it was filmed in a four by three ratio so it was like he he really tried to make it as true as possible to have it um to the 90s wow so he wanted he even wanted the viewer to feel like they're in the 90s so literally everything I was watching an interview about it today, actually. Yeah. Everything in the film he made sure was from the 90s. He said even down to the trash bags that they used in like the bins, he said they, they, I wanted them to look like they were from the 90s. Wow. I don't know what that means. Yeah, trash bags. <laughs> but like <laughs> he just wanted to stay true to it. 
Um, yeah. yeah, no, it was just really, really well made. Like even the actors that don't have a background in acting, like did a really solid job. So that was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That actually reminds me of um, something I watched last night. I actually forgot because I wasn't a big fan. Um, surrounding the hype of the Avengers release, Chris Evans actually directed a movie in 2014. Don't even remember the name because we didn't finish watching. Um, I know. I, I know. I, <laughs> it was before before something. It starts with before. That's all I know. I, I could even be wrong with that. I have heard, I have heard of this, um, but I can't remember. I've yeah. I've heard that it's really bad. Yeah, and yeah. it actually got a higher rating on IMDb than I expected. I think it got like a six point six or something, which I'm like. Well, it should be about three or four, to be honest. Mm. Sorry, Chris Evans. Yeah, I've, but I kind of we we just phased out. We just t- started talking and we we just stopped the movie. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll finish it at some point, but it's probably not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But let's get into the main topic. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on, I guess, media and entertainment affecting us as Christians? So, like, let's think about it. That's movies, TV shows, um, music, and video games. So I want to hear your initial thoughts, like just straight off the bat, first thought. Mm -hmm. Well, even YouTube these days. Yes, and YouTube. Internet is a powerful place. Yeah, that's what we're on right now. (laughs) Um, So this is actually a topic that you, you said the same thing, but it's actually really relevant for me right now as well because... I was actually having these conversations this this weekend surrounding music that I've been enjoying. Um, We'll unpack that in a second. (laughs) Um, But yes, (laughs) I guess that's all I have to say really off the top of my head. Um, It's it's kind of close to my heart at the moment because, yeah, I I do actually have some questions about how much I should be consuming, if it's affecting me, and what I should be doing if it is, and how I should be checking myself if I don't know if it is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of my initial thoughts. Yeah. In in my case, I think I'm always going through this cycle where, um, like, I don't, I don't really watch many, I get, all right, I'm just going to say like secular things. Like I don't watch many TV shows and movies and listen to music. But then, like, I'll come back to to this loop and I'll be like, oh, let's watch this, like, let's watch this TV show where I'm like, mm, is it really going to help me spiritually? I'm not sure. But then I'll go into a cycle and it's the same with music. Like, I'll be listening to nothing but, like, you know, Hillsong and Bethel Music and all those Christian artists. And then I'll listen to, like, a few songs here and there. And then I'll start just only listening to secular music until like Sabbath rolls around. <laughs> That's kind of my thing. I think, <clears throat> I think I've finally been able to, to like find a good middle ground. Mm. But I think the main problem is that it like once it starts consuming your mind or con- not controlling, but taking over your mind, like when it changes who you are as a, as a person and, and as a Christian, I think that's when it starts to be a problem. Yeah. Yep. Um, like, I mean, like you were saying, like about the YouTube part, like we have the internet at our fingertips. And so we have literally any form of entertainment we want, mm. like at our fingertips like that, like streaming services, um, pirating, like there's literally, any, like you can get your hands on anything you want. Um, and that's just so easy for you to just unknowingly like let your mind be succumbed. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm using that word incorrectly. No, but like, that's correct. That's... But like, yeah, just being so heavily involved in stuff that probably isn't good for you spiritually. Yeah, for sure. Well, I guess we can take this conversation in so many different directions. Yeah. Like what is <laughs> bad for you spiritually? Is everything that's not Christian bad for you spiritually? If you're a Christian. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, where where should we go from here? <laughs> well, I guess let's look at it like my my grandma, bless her heart, mm. love her. She um she would oh well she's not my grandma, she was my nan. She's my nan. Mm. That's what we call her. Mm-hmm. Hi nan, I know you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um she so on O'Halloran Hill or near O'Halloran Hill they used to have the outdoor cinema. Okay. 
Yeah. Do you know? Do you remember that? No. Okay. There used to be an outdoor cinema, and if you're driving on the road, you could see the screen. Huh. And so, when my mum was growing up, and like my uncles and aunties, every time they drove past there, <laughs> my nan would make them cover their eyes because she didn't <laughs> want them watching the movie. Oh wow! No matter what it was. No matter what it was. Yeah. And like, I, I guess that's just relevant to the time. But I mean, hey, that's like that's how Seventh Day Adventists used to used to be. Mm. Like they used to not really, they used to not be involved with movies and music that wasn't a hymn. Yeah. And like all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, should we be going back? Should we be going back to that, or like should we be embracing it? Should we be using it as a as a tool of evangelism. Yeah. Um, should we be using... Uh, what, was your, what was that last bit you just said? Should a, tool, we, a tool of, an, of evangelism. Should we be using secular content as a tool of evangelism? Yeah. Is that, is that even possible? Ah. As in, should we... Are you, are you asking... Sorry, I'm trying to understand yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah, sorry, no. <laughs> are you asking if we should sort of have our own spin on that kind of content? Or should we speak to it mm. if, if people are like asking us about it? Like, you know, why, why do you disagree with this sort of media or I think, I think initially I meant like, should we be, um, I guess using secular music in Christian situations to make us more inviting uh, or what you were saying? Like, should we, should we express why we disagree with it? Okay. Okay. So should we be using it? like in our kind of social circle or in our, you know, circles to make it, make it seem more inviting. Well, I guess in terms of, yeah, I had to think about this because you want to be, I, I guess <laughs> for lack of better words, you, you want to be relevant. You want to, you want to fit in. You want to be able to like have, be on the same page as other people. And Avengers is a classic example of this because I think there are some people who in our church who haven't seen the previous movies, but they feel like they have to watch this one mm. to be part of the, the conversation. So yeah, there, there is a bit of that. There is a bit of that. Um, and I think a, a big one for, for me personally, <laughs> um, it might be a little bit, I'm not embarrassed, but you know, lo- looking at it today, I was doing some research and I'm, I think I'm a little bit ashamed. Um, <laughs> So I've started liking Billie Eilish. Yep, seventeen-year-old music phenom. Yeah, Billie and, Eilish. Yep. And for those who, I think, I think as soon as we said her name, I think people already have their own image of her. And so I think you know why we brought her up. <laughs> but for those who don't know, yeah. So as Ted just said, she's seventeen. She's massive at the moment. I think she's got about, I think five out of the ten songs, if I'm not mistaken, are. The, the the aria top 10 I yeah think. so i think she's just dominating the charts millions everywhere. of followers on instagram yeah like hundreds and thousands even possibly millions of monthly spotify listeners mm-hmm. like insane yep traveling the world mm. and she's not even an adult yet <laughs> yeah and looking just just watching some of her videos you can kind of tell <laughs> she's not the typical artist that you see um i guess everywhere like on YouTube and on Spotify. Um, she's got her own little weird things that she does. I think <laughs> I think she features blood in like almost every one of her music videos. I haven't seen all of them. Nice. But, but like, it's um, a little bit strange. Yeah. Her, her lyrics, I, I Googled. So I think it's number one in Australia at the moment, Bad Guy. Um, yep. I am aware of the song. I am sh- uncomfortable by the song, <laughs> but continue. Um, I, so it's, it's classic me. I don't really listen to, like, I don't, you know, obviously sometimes you do like listen to the lyrics and sing along, but I think with this one, it's kind of just like, bad guy. <laughs> like That's the part <laughs> I'm just paying attention to. But then I Googled her lyrics today and it's got a really strange message, that song. Um, and I actually brought along some of the lyrics here, um, which some of them are oh, the one that just stuck out to me now is... Um, <laughs> Go on, Paul, say it. <laughs> Make your mama sad type. Make your girlfriend mad type. Might seduce your dad type. 
<laughs> <laughs> and then it later later on it goes goes into um oh someone she's got yeah a bit about the lyrics my mommy likes to sing along with me but she won't sing this song if she reads all the lyrics she'll pity the men i know i never i noticed that first part i was talking about that but what the, the lyrics i just read i never actually noticed i'm like whoa like this song specifically she's like yeah so if, if you if you google bad guy lyrics you'll you'll see what i was talking about but um you know i'll just say it, i think it's a little bit satanic <laughs> you know to an extent um and she doesn't actually go out and from what i from what from what i understand she hasn't actually publicly said that she's you know anti-christ mm. but i actually <laughs> i actually um today i listened to one of her to her interviews she recorded here while she was touring um, with Ben and Liam on Triple J and they asked her about her Instagram followers. So she's following 666 people and they kind of confronted her and they, they were basically like, is that is that on purpose? Like, what's the story behind that? And she was like, it's kind of just a stupid thing that I do was, was her response. And she was like, and it's kind of a good way to sort of keep track of how many people I'm following and not have too many. I'm like, all right. <laughs> if you, like, <laughs> if, if that's the only reason, then sure but I, th- I think there's something a little bit more to it there's more to it yeah. well in high school i used to be a very a very huge fan of a music artist called tyler the creator mm-hmm. and these days in his last two albums he actually um released very very whole i would i would say it's almost wholesome the content that he the up that he up, 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 ugh, that he released mm. um like i guess his latest album flower boy yeah, you know, like even the title itself just like screams wholesome. Ah, oh, peace. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just it's just all about self discovery. But his first two, um, his first two albums were very very dark, very very similar to kind of. Actually, no, I wouldn't. Even, I would say I would argue that it's worse than what Billie okay. Eilish was saying. Like, oh wow. Um, but yeah, it. I mean, I I even I knew what he was saying. When I was a teenager and yeah. I was like, oh, this is funny. Like he's like doing it to make fun of people, like to not be taken seriously. But I mean, looking back on it now, like I realize like that is like super dark even to joke about. Yeah. Or to even like, you know, mention. Mm. Um, and he's like been known for being controversial in the, like in the past, like with Twitter and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Like, I wasn't actually fully across him. I am. Um... As in his previous sort of music. I, I, listen, I have listened to a bit of his newer stuff, which, yeah, like you were saying, it's a little bit more... Yeah, it's I think very, very different by the sounds of it from yeah. what he used to be. Yeah, um, it is easy. But yeah, like, it's... Yeah, music, I think, is one of my... Used to be one of my biggest problems. I, I say... I reckon... Like, it's not even the content for me, almost. It's... it's I really enjoy the artists, and I'm like, wow, these guys are so amazing. Like... Like they, they managed to like, you know, get out of poverty and do this with their lives. They, they have this amazing talent, yep. but it's like, I'm letting the artist consume my mind more than I'm letting God consume my mind. Like, it's like placing people and God on similar levels. And that was when I realized like, oh man, I got to reset. And so like, I stopped listening to that music. So I let God take priority again. Yep. And I like... I don't. I would argue that that is more so the issue rather than just like letting evil ly- or evil lyrics like enter your mind. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what made you actually sort of have this realization is what I'm curious about. <laughs> Someone told me actually. Okay. Um. Yeah, I was just like, I remember, like, I want, I want to start, like, I want to start making music. Um, just my own stuff with some friends and whatnot. Yeah. And I remember like maybe six, four to six months ago, I was showing a friend a playlist and I was like, oh, like, I like this song because of like the the orchestra that they have, like the strings that they have, or I like this bit because of the specific auto tune that they use, or I like this bit because of the guitar riffs. And I was showing them each individual song. And then they were like, Ted, <laughs> I've never... <laughs> heard you talk so passionately about something (laughs) and then i was like what do you mean and then and then they're like well i mean like i know that you're passionate about god but i mean 
this is a different kind of passion that I've seen. And then it kind of hit me. And they, they, were, they were meaning it in love. They were saying, like, they weren't trying to be like, you're a bad Christian. Mm. But they, they were just telling me like, hey, like, I see this. And like, while it's great that you want to do cool things, like, maybe just be careful with what you're kind of focusing on. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. But that, that is just me. That is just one person. I'm, I'm sure other people have completely different stories and opinions yeah, on music. For sure. What w- was that kind of difficult to do? Or were you at a place where it was like, no, I can just let this sort of go. And Oh, I, I'm, I'm very surprised by that. Actually. I, I was like, you're right. <laughs> and I just like, I deleted all the secular music off my Spotify library. I mean, wow. I can always go back to it whenever I want, okay. but I deleted all of it. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't like downloaded on my phone and I was mm-hmm. like only listening to like, yeah, just Christian music, like chill, easy listening Christian music. Yeah. And like, honestly, that's the best way to start a day. I'm going to be real. Mm. Listening to Christian music is like, just helps you get into the right mindset. I fully agree with that. That's <laughs> even like, yeah, I've been starting my days recently. I, it's funny. I actually, these days I'm waking up and as I'm waking up and getting ready, I've kind of been like, I want to listen to like these three songs on the way to work. Cause my drive to work is so short. I'm like, I want to make the most of it almost. <laughs> I'm like, these songs will get me like, will make a great start to my day. Mm. And they're often, they're often Hillsong. They're often Jason Mraz. I've been a huge fan of his surprisingly since, if I'm not mistaken, like year six, <laughs> which is really wow. strange because when I was growing up, they were like, People were like, you listen to this stuff? I specifically remember a, a year seven. This is going very off topic, but I just want to say this. A year seven um, like bus trip. It was an excursion. And I had one of these really old Sony Sony Walkmans. Oh. I think it was about the time iPods were coming out. But As in like the CDs? Not the CDs. So it was the ones, it was digital. Oh, so an MP3 player? It was an MP3 player. Yeah. And you had to, oh, it was such a pain. You had to hook it up via like... Um, mini usb and it came like you had to use the sony walkman specific um software on your computer to put music on it kind of like an ipod okay yeah yeah, um, yeah. but it was actually kind of smaller than ipod so it's actually kind of cool but anyway i was kind of just sharing what, the, what music i was listening to and it was jason Mraz's 2008 album and it was like very just like a relaxing album like the whole way through I'm like what the heck like you listen to this like i'm like, oh, I'm just like listening to like green day and all that stuff <laughs> and i'm like the old one out but like even to this day like his music is just so relaxing um, he's, he's got sort of a religious, um, vibe to it as well. And, um, not always, his, his songs aren't always religious, but he kind of refers to God in like a good and good and enlightening and uplifting way. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, yeah, like God can get you through this sort of stuff. And that's like, that's the kind of stuff I've, I've been loving to get up to in the morning as well. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Music is actually like a, a crazy thing, man. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, like it's so easy for me to just like let it consume my mind. Like it's like it, I in the past, like it was so easy for it to um eat, like distance myself from God. Even even recently, even though I did say like oh, I'm much better at it now. Even recently, like I was kind of like, man, I'm a, I'm feeling a little distant from God. And I was like while I was listening to like regular music, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's probably why. And so I like I recognized it pretty quickly okay. and then I just switched over. But music artists that I guess aren't necessarily Christian, I make sure that like I listen to music that isn't um, like evil, I guess, in the topics. Like I'm like, yeah. like Bad Guys by Billie Eilish. Like I'm not a big fan of that song. Yeah. Um, partly because I just don't like like it mm-hmm. and then secondly because of the lyrics that are in it and like the themes yep and so i mean there's this band that i've been listening to lately called remo drive they're a not a very big band from colorado or minnesota anyways that's not relevant and like they are very instrument like very instrumental like a lot of their songs carry a big instrumental and not that many lyrics but even okay. their lyrics aren't um they're not bad. Like I would, I would say that they're not bad. Like it's, this is going to be embarrassing to admit, but I guess you could put them in the genre of emo. So like, <laughs> so they just play music that's 
Or they, they kind of sing about things like, you know, breakups and like... Hang on, instrumental emo. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to put it in like simplified manner, but it's, it's called DIY. I don't really know what that stands for, okay. but that's like, that's like an aesthetic. I guess you could call it like garage band punk uh, okay. kind yep. of style. But okay. anyways, like the, the lyrics that they have in their songs aren't like, like one of them is about art school and how he, and how he's in art school and he is in love with this girl and he's with a band. Like, that's all it is. Like, it's not bad. But yeah. 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 Music is actually such a huge topic because there's, like we were just saying, there's different ways you can go down. Like, is it the lyrics? Is it the, the beat? And I've heard so much actually growing up about the beat of music impacting. And how it's played backwards? I've is heard it? that as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it. I, yeah, that's, that was an interesting one. I've, I've heard, I think, a sermon about that as well. <laughs> and then I, I think that actually made me, because this is like a number of years ago, I think that actually made me go back and play things backwards. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure it has its place, but definitely not for everything. Yeah. I'm just going to say that right now. But yeah, as I was saying, like it, the lyrics obviously have, you know, if you're, you're listening to it. So you're obviously like, consuming it in one way or another even if it's you're, it's not conscious but i'm i'm not fully across the science about how the beats and the rhythm impact if they even do impact uh i guess in the long run your relationship with god mm. i'm not I, I like i'll ask you are, are you sort of aware of any of that sort of thing no uh i was not aware of any beat or instrumentals like kind of changing the way you think yeah um but no i like from personal experience, I have realized that, I guess, listening to the wrong type of music does change the way you think. Like, it puts patterns in your brain and it, like, makes you think differently. Yep. Like, even, like, even just, like, saying a curse word. Like, if true. you hear it over and over again, it's going to be second nature to you and it is going to come out of your own mouth eventually. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And I think also... Um, yeah, I, the one the one thing I can think of how it impacts, I guess, I guess maybe, like the instruments, is probably just how you feel like the, in the mm-hmm. moment. I think, as we were saying before, like I've I've picked songs in the morning to like help me like have a calming day, have a relaxing day the whole way through, um, and I specifically reached for those specific songs out um, to help me do that. So I think the opposite of that might, yeah, obviously cause the opposite effect. Um, yeah, very true. Since you know, if if we go out of our way to sort of feel a certain way. Music can do that to us uh, if it's worked in the past, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of t- rewinding a little bit before we t- spoke about music, mm. movies. Yeah. Do you reckon... Wait, sorry. I have seen... I mean, when you, I mean, when you get onto a certain part of YouTube, there are so many videos where it's like, oh, this movie, oh, this Disney film had like inappropriate images in it for one frame (laughs) and like stuff like that like maybe not i'm not necessarily talking about that sort of stuff but like do you think movies can affect the way we think spiritually yeah i think it has it can have a similar impact as music for sure um yeah again i'm not a psychologist so i can (laughs) i can we can we can only speak from experience yeah um definitely but i will i will say that movies you know you're you're cons- you're spending time to to sort of be fully engaged usually in in what you're watching and i think like you were saying especially with like the swearing if you're seeing something a lot like whatever it is if, if it's if it's inappropriate imagery like you were saying then i don't know what <laughs> what they can make you do it depends what it is really but i think it does have an impact somehow especially if it's sort of not with your values as a christian um, it could take you down the wrong, the wrong way. And I'm general. I realize I'm generalizing a lot here, but because it's it's kind of hard to identify if it has had a big impact. I think for me, because yeah, you mentioned about your your, your realization about music. Um, I've had a s- smaller, maybe a smaller version of that. Like <laughs> not just like a moment. I think for me, it was. It's been sort of like. I'm kind of going back to music here. I, I would t- I'll, I'll talk about both because I think I've had a similar experience with, with both. Like with movies, it's 
I, I'm tending to lean towards the religious and I guess calming music over some other choices. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to be very concrete about how it exactly affects you. I guess it just depends on how, how much time you spend on it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's like all the time, then it's going to sort of slowly, but surely take you the opposite direction. Yeah. Especially if that time is like replacing time that you set aside for devotions and like spending exactly. time with God. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, maybe kind of changing a, my, a point. Um, I watched a movie with some friends, um, Oh, Littlefoot. And that is a kid's movie. Um, there was nothing in the cinema. So we're like, let's just watch it. Like, like I'm sure it's not that bad. Um, it has James Corden and... Oh, who's that dude? Channing Tatum. Channing yeah. Tatum's in that movie. And a bunch of other actors. Yeah. Um, so Littlefoot is a movie about these Bigfoots living on top of a mountain. And they have all these really specific rules that they need to follow and it's like on the like they come from the stone these stones and like they're drawn out and then the head elder like wears it and it's like now the stone says that you must like run on this ice cube for a day i don't know <laughs> so it's, it's literally unusual stuff like that okay um and then they're like they were saying that if we don't do that then the smoke or they believe that um if if no, sorry, they believe that their planet or like their mountaintop is based on a um, three floating elephants, and that and then if they don't cool down the elephants, they'll fall like walk off and then they'll fall. Oh. But then they're like, but what if that's not true? Like we have to go below because like they're covered in clouds around yeah. them, yeah. and so they jump down and they're like, we don't need to follow these stupid rules. Like these rules are crazy and they're wacky. And then it's like, it made me think about like, that seems like anti-Christian, like that's a, that's a very anti-Christian message. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, cause people were following Christianity for so many years. And then finally people have been saying like, we don't need to follow these rules. Like we can do our own thing. Yeah. And then at the end of the movie, they were like the people that were against following all these rules were right. And like, I don't want to say the word necessarily but it kind of felt like anti-theist propaganda <laughs> propaganda is a really hard word but yeah that's how i saw it and i was like bro this is like this is bad this is bad i should have walked out the cinema and like like this is a movie for kids like they Whoa. are they are instilling this information instilling they are yeah. they are giving this information to kids like to be to tell like to subconsciously tell them like hey like yeah. Don't follow this. Well, like, that's that's a scary thing for me. Yeah. Even as you're explaining that, I, I thought of Adam and Eve. Sort of like if she was eating the fruit, that they, that's in, in that movie context, like that, that's them being in, enlightened. Yeah. Um, if if that's what the word you want to use for for lack of better words, enlightened. Yeah. Uh, after she ate the apple, probably the wrong word to use, but moving on. <laughs> well, like not just kids movies, but I guess, do you reckon... Like mo- like horror movies, supernatural ones, um, are kind of opening your heart to let the devil in, mm. or l- open your mind to like let the devil come in and you know give you these thoughts and these ideas. Well, as as I was saying before, I I can only go off my experience and people that I know experience. We, you know, biblically, we know that it can have that sort of impact, um, but. From my own personal experience, I haven't had the biggest from from what I've from what I've sort of analyzed of myself. <laughs> I don't think I've ha- I I've had the biggest impact from from secular content. Um, maybe I have. Maybe I don't even realize it uh, as I'm saying this right now. Maybe I'll look in ten years' time. And I'm like I was completely wrong. I'm gonna watch yeah. this podcast and be like, "Damn, you were so far from the truth." <laughs> but like at, at the moment, it's it is a very um, close to my heart thing at the moment because as I was saying the, the whole Billy Eilish thing and everything else and I, I actually really want to make a point to sort of catch myself if I do see myself changing or going down the wrong path or 
yeah, if, if I sort of see myself being affected in any way, I need to sort of like stop myself and be like, hey, like call myself out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, yeah, movies I found have always been a very different situation for me compared to music. I can't really think of movies that would make me kind of, that would distance me from God. Like off the top of my head, I, like I can't think. I, I reckon like when we watch supernatural films and TV shows, like I, 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 I never, oh, I don't know how to put this, but like, like other films and TV shows, I haven't really been like, yo, this is definitely separating my relationship with God. Mm. Um, but like, like you were saying, I could be wrong as well. Maybe, maybe I am letting it into my mind too much. Maybe I'm consuming it too much and it is pushing God out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but like, I never really watched like, super, I'm not a big fan of the idea of supernatural purely because it scares me and like, like it's not stuff to joke around about. And in my opinion, it's not something that we should be joking around about. Like, cause yep. it's, it's real. It is real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like. Like that, I guess in regards to like supernatural stuff, yeah, I stay away from it because of that purely. Like mm-hmm. I have listened, I have watched like in the past, I've watched stuff, probably not. Yeah, I wouldn't do it again <laughs> <laughs> um, because it just, it, it genuinely scared me because like I've, I've heard so many stories of like firsthand accounts mm. of like seeing like supernatural evils yep. in people's lives, which is really scary. Yeah. Especially yeah. those movies that are all about that. Like, because you were saying, um, sort of, oh, what was the word you used just then? Um, yeah, Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Um, there are movies that specifically have those sorts of things yeah. where, like, Paranormal can, it, Activity. Paranormal Activity, yeah. Even, like, the movie It, Stephen King's movie adaptation, It, like, that's about a demon yeah. that eats kids. Like, like it's. Yeah. I th- it's hardcore, man. Yeah. Like, I think one that keeps coming coming up as well is is Harry Potter, which comparing that to horror, it's quite different. I think <laughs> it's its own category. I, I, what what category would you would you call Harry Potter? Fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> as as I said that, yeah, the same word came to mind. Um, I I enjoyed the series. I don't know. If, have you seen the whole thing? No, I've watched, I think, two of them. One was okay. because I was forced... No, both of them was because I was forced to. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so it is... So, is that for, sort of for like the same reason for you? Yeah, like witches and yep. stuff like that. Like it's very it's, understandable. Yeah, it's all evil spirits and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually have watched the entire series. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and... Yeah, I think it's the same thing with with you. What you said earlier, I haven't actually noticed mm. an impact, you know. And you know what we could be saying could be a little bit controversial. Yeah, and it could, we could be completely wrong we as be, well. Yeah, but you know, this podcast is, is, I think, good to talk about our experiences and what other people's experiences are. And you know, us, me, me personally, um, I don't think it has had the biggest impact. Um, and if it has. I think I need to check myself. That's how I was saying before. <laughs> um, it's you know I've seen it. Yeah, you know, I probably watched it about three years ago. The whole the whole series. Mm. Um, I enjoyed the the storyline and things like that. Um, I don't think I ever got really scared about it. Yeah, I don't it, think it's, it's an not, overly scary film. It's not meant to be a series. Yeah, that's right. So that that's in my experience with that sort of thing. But I do tend to to stay away from mm. horror personally as well because horror is just like blatant like not really first of all it's not really enjoyable for me anyway yeah um for me i i think i like i really enjoy like film like all film and i really like watching movies not not necessarily for the themes like that is a part of it and like the storyline and the plot but i really like the whole like everything about it like the pacing of the film the the acting the dialogue the the style of film that they're using the like i guess like the yeah the genres as well like how how directors take an idea and put it into a genre and like really like that so for me um i think like we or i sorry like i i can watch horror 
as long as it's like not too hardcore, but only because I want to watch it. Or if I choose to watch it, it's for like looking at it from a cinematic point of view. But then again, I rarely like I don't I don't overly enjoy horror either. But that's because I'm a bit of a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I've you know I've had other reasons to watch it as well. I think one for for me and my mates have been just comedic <laughs> how like how how bad oh, they are yeah 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 because yeah. they can be pretty terrible at times yes um you know based off my limited experience i only watched a couple really to be honest um i have seen it that was probably the last one that i have seen i think it was released last year 2017 i okay. think yeah yeah you'll be right um which yeah it was i found it pretty dumb and i have been avoiding horror ever since then and nothing, nothing actually, you know, nothing supernatural happened in my life. Yeah, yeah, afterwards. yeah. But I do realize that that's that specific genre of movies, like has, yeah, like you said, has impacted people before in a real way. And it, yeah, because I just, if, if you don't enjoy something, it's really easy to avoid it as well. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that too, thing. that too. <laughs> um, kind of continuing on with this horror. Yeah. I do apologize. We haven't been talking about that for quite a long time, but it, it, it <laughs> it's a big is a topic. Yeah, it is a big topic. Like I know someone who like, they've told me like they used to love horror films, like supernatural slaughters, like those killer movies and all that sort of stuff. And they said like, they were at a point where they felt like really low, like emotionally, like they felt like, I wouldn't say depression, but they were like, just, they felt like their mood was a lot, was a lot more negative than like positive and like they said to me this was like a long like this was long before they told me yeah when this happened to them but they were like yeah like i just like i think it, like i realized it was the horror movies and like the stuff that i'm looking at mm. like like i reckon satan like p- made his way into my mind and like you know, put all these doubts and all these thoughts and all these evil things in my mind that completely changed my mood because I was allowing, you know, all this stuff to like, I was, I was allowing myself to consume all this evil stuff. Yeah. So I I don't, maybe it's not necessarily like, like maybe it's not necessarily because it's supernatural or because it's like scary, but maybe it's because like we open our, like I, like I mentioned earlier, like, are we opening our hearts to, to, you know, to an evil, an evil spirit to like consume us or to con- not control us, but to, you know, plant seeds of neg- negativity in our mind. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's from a firsthand account of them being like, yeah, like it was definitely like as soon as I stopped watching all those things and focusing on God, like spending more time with him, replacing time that I would watch spending uh, time that I would watch horror movies, like mm. switching it with spending time with, you know, God, like his mood changed. Yeah. Like very quickly. He was wow. telling me. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's insane. It's crazy. Well, <laughs> I say crazy and it's awesome. <laughs> As in it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, I think in that, in that sort of context, that's probably the way to, to like see firsthand the impact it has on people. Um, and it, I say that because maybe maybe watching the Harry Potter series doesn't have a huge impact in the long run. But if you want to keep, you know, if, based on that, off that situation alone, if you want to keep yourself, I guess, pure or <laughs> I don't know what else, what other word to use, I, I guess. Or even, even in your friend's situation, I guess, happy. Mm. Like if it's affecting your mood, obviously you want to, you yeah. want to, you want to change it. That's, that's sort of like a basic thing. I think, you know, you realize this is what's causing you to be upset or, you know, moving away from God. And I, I guess maybe that's the same with, with music. Like if it might be a good idea to, to completely separate from all the secular content that's being produced. Um, I guess if you're enjoying it and it's not making a huge impact it might not. Well, I would. Sorry, I'm going to change what you said there. Yeah. I would argue, if you were watching that sort of stuff or listening to that music, yeah, and even if it's changing you, 
What, no, what did you say? Even if it's not affecting you that much. I would say even okay, if it's yeah. affecting you like a tiny bit, like you should. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I think I, I had the wrong choice of words. I think if what, what I should be saying is. If it's not affecting you. Yeah. Like if, if you don't, or if you don't, re- you know, you might not realize it's affecting you. That's the thing. Yeah, it's, no, it's, that is true. And I've, I've been having a thing about it, you know, this, this weekend um, because it's been coming up a lot. Um, with all the sort of questionable content that's being released, is it what what is it doing to me? And I haven't had this big realization like your friend has, but maybe I will one day. <laughs> maybe like, and I'm not consuming it twenty four seven. You know what I mean? It's not like a mm. huge thing in my life. It's sort of just content that I enjoy that might be a little bit questionable. And I think you know there might be a point where I might be like, I think I need to cut it out. And I'm not saying. Right now, I'm like, I'm, I'm really loving it. So, like, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm really loving Billie Eilish. So I'm just going to keep listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have had this... I, I'm not ignoring who she is. Yeah. It's it's blatantly obvious the the parts about her that are, that are questionable. And I'm not fully aware of how it impacts me. And if I listen to it all the time, how, like what, what changes will take place in my life, um, if any. That's the thing. That, that's why I'm sort of... Mm. I have questions like where to from here I it's it's kind of it's a little bit um, challenging well I guess should we like let's say as soon as you were to listen to secular music t- and watch TV shows and movies that weren't or that that were secular like I just said mm. um, should we only be watching Christian media <laughs> can I can I just I even though I asked a question, I yeah. just want to say one yeah, thing. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Christian entertainment is really, really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, like like I I think like sorry. Movies. Christian movies. Like that's when I think when I think of Christian entertainment, I think Christian movies. Oh man. <laughs> it's like it just the acting is bad. I fully agree with you. The the, the storylines are yeah yeah and like corny yeah very corny and i don't know how like okay when i think about christian movies this is the these are the movies that i'm thinking about yeah facing the giants courageous fireproof i feel like there's one more that i can't think of right now but they're all made by the same as far as i'm aware they're a church Okay. That makes these films. All right. Yeah. But they are so bad, and I feel like that. It like that is the stand. Like that is the bar that Christian filmmakers. I don't even know if that exists. Yeah. Like aspire for, and I'm like, <laughs> there could like maybe it's maybe it's the lack of money. Maybe it is because it is volunteers doing it. Although I think these days, at first I think it was volunteering, mm, but now I think it's, it's become its own. Like it's actual like they're making money from it. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on. Even the location, I guess. And the location. And, like, and the denomination. There's a couple of things that affect it. Like, I just... Like, I'm sorry, but that stuff's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I fully, fully agree. Like, there's been some good stuff, but those movies I'm, I am aware of. And yeah, I fully agree with you. Sorry. What, what's that? Yeah, go. I want to make... I just want to make it clear. Like, I don't necessarily hate all those films, but they are just not up to standard of... Hollywood. It's not what you would Hollywood share. Hollywood entertainment. To your friends. You wouldn't suggest to watch it. Yeah. Like instead of something else. Yeah. Like I, I would say that it's not like when you compare it to so many other films, you know, secular films that you watch, like it's, it's the quality is nowhere near as good. Yep. Yep. Um, There's been some good ones. Like um, let's, let's give Christians in general some <laughs> sort of positivity. Um, um, what's that war one? I never remember the name. If you're going to say the one with... 2016. With... With Andrew Garfield? Yes. Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. I do not define that as a Christian film. No, it's not. It's not. But it does have a Christian message as well. It does have a Christian message. And it revolves around a Seventh-day Adventist man? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like, look, that is actually... Like, that was really awesome Mm. that... You know, Hollywood. Well, I don't. I don't know if it's really technically Hollywood anymore because, it, like, 
films are made worldwide like yep. good films are made worldwide but yep. like you know the film industry made a film with this in it like that is great but i wouldn't define that a Christ, like as a christian movie yep. purely because i think it's just it's really graphic yes i think that it i is. think that does kind of i don't know i don't know i don't know how i feel maybe i need to think about it a bit more maybe mm-hmm. i need to explain something in a later podcast once i learn some more what but, what makes a film christian <laughs> <laughs> well I'm going to say the themes definitely like the themes and the message behind the films do define uh, do define Christ, like whether it's Christian or not but not just that but I think also I guess who it's made by as well yep definitely um then again, like I know, I understand that Hacksaw Ridge, like the theme of it and the message is good. I just, hmm, <laughs> I've kind of stumped myself, kind of backed myself. I stumped you. Sorry, putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not something I would watch on the Sabbath purely because I think I'm focusing too much on the cinematic mm. than the message. Mm. And I think the cinematic actually that's a good point yeah maybe maybe not necessarily like the cinematics as a whole but like i'm i'm looking at the gory not the gory but like the action and the violence and i'm looking at all that sort of stuff yeah more than i'm thinking about jesus when i watch that film yeah that's a good point because that is a big part of the movie it's that's a good point about like if you would watch it on the sabbath that's yeah that's a good way to actually and like i've always kind of i used (laughs) i regret saying well feeling this way but back in 2008 Transformers, two thousand eight. Yes, yep. two thousand eight. Oh, oh, oh seven. First, oh, seven. <laughs> I, I have a feeling it was two thousand eight. I okay. could be wrong. If yep. anyone knows what the year it is, yep. they can correct me. Yep. Transformers came out. That was my favorite movie of of all time mm. at that time. Mm. Um, and I used to ask my parents if I could watch, <laughs> if I could watch it on the Sabbath, because it was good versus evil, like. Jesus versus Satan. Like I used to believe that. And then yeah. like we were Sam Witwicky, the the boy in it. Yeah. And like, you know, they're fighting like, you know, good and bad are fighting over us. Yeah. Yeah. But then my parents were like, no, Ted, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but that's how I see it. <laughs> if that's how it works, we could basically watch anything. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars, A lot. Star Trek, um, <laughs> any you can even watch like 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 gangster movies. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> like literally anything. But yeah, I think I think a big part of it is what um yeah, what what is more of a focus, the message or this the cinematics, I think is is a good category. So, yeah. what's like what is more important for the filmmaker? Is it the is it the theme? Is it the message that they're trying to give or is it what they want to show? Yeah. Yeah. I think that does. De- I think that defines a yeah. Christian movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, then that's a good way to go back into uh, the question that we sort of posed to ourselves before: Should we only be, um, should we only be consuming Christian media? I don't think. Well, okay, I don't think that's a bad thing. But me saying that, if I if I'm saying that that's not a bad thing, should we be doing it? That's a challenge. Yeah. Like, like if it's not bad for you and it's, and it's only going to grow your relationship with God, should we be doing it all the time? Yeah. I, like, yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one. I mean, it's, it's really hard because I mean, while, while we don't necessarily want to, like, while we don't want to, you know, while while we we as Christians are set are told to be kind of set apart from the rest of the world, we don't want to be irrelevant. And I think sometimes if we are only being like, no, 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 I can't go to the movies with you because like it's not Christian, or no, 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 I can't I can't go to this 
music show with you because it's not Christian mm. or like, no, 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 I can't, I can't watch that TV show with you because it's not Christian. Yeah. I think that really does put a lot of barriers um, between you and, and the, between the relationships between you and another person and possible, you know, possibly reaching out to them on a spiritual level. Yeah. I agree with that. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I even like, Stumped myself with yeah. this qu- when when writing this run sheet run yeah. rundown sheet I was like man I actually don't know how to answer this question like it's such a it's such a catch twenty two kind of thing yeah like you d- you don't want to like it's not about letting down friends but it's about showing them the love of Jesus like Jesus hung out with prostitutes and yep. sick people when back then they thought sick meant sin yeah like like we like we're not meant to be like oh no. I can't watch this because I'm too good for it. Like, or because it's not Jesus and I am better than that. Like, like it's just, yeah, I think, I think as long as they're not, the things aren't contradicting your values, your Christian values. Ah, I'm on a good thought path here. (laughs) As long as the things that you are involving yourself with, whether that be music, whether that be movies, whether that be TV shows, whether that be video games as well, which we haven't really talked about, but no, it's all right. Um, like, I think if those things don't contradict, like, your values as a Christian, then by all means, go for it. If it means that, like, you are connecting with others. Mm. I think that's a great answer to that question. Thanks, man. Because, <laughs> yeah, cause I, yeah, I sort of stumped myself earlier. I was like, oh, what, do I, what do I do about this, this music that I'm listening to? Because, yeah, because we've put in... Romans 12, 2 here, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And as I was reading that today, I was like, you know, how, how far do we take it almost? It's, yeah. it's kind of a bad question to ask because it is biblical and we should be, I guess, following as much as we can. But at the same time, there's, you know, we are on this planet. Mm. So where do we draw the line? Could because I was thinking as well, like with with work, you know, even even if you're avoiding all the secular media there is, you come you start a job depending on what you start, and you're automatically put into a position where that sort of even just table talk is is being is is surrounding you mm. depending on what you do again. But that's actually I think a great way to put it if it's if it's changing your values and you notice it then that's probably where you should start having a think well not necessarily changing but like Uh, even if the message behind it is contradicting what you believe that's true but But, yeah like it's 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 hardcore hey like if if you were to only watch movies that were made oh i wish i remembered the name of the production company (laughs) (laughs) if you were made by the people that made uh, if you only watched movies that were made by the people that did Courageous and Fireproof yep. and The Longest Yard. Oh, not The Longest Yard, Facing the Giants. The movie yep. is Facing the Giants. I think earlier I said Longest Yard. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I don't think you did. I hope I didn't say Longest Yard because that not. is a different movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm aware of that one as well though. Um, but yeah, like that, like how are we going to relate to anyone? How, like, how are you going to have friends at work? If you're if you're at a lunch like if you're having lunch with people and they're talking about the latest, uh, just an example, the latest Game of Thrones that is like the hot topic at the moment. Yep. How are you going to relate to them? Like, how, or even not not necessarily Game of Thrones, but like the new Avengers film. How are you going to relate to those people? Yeah. If you're not if you're being like, no, I can't watch that. Yeah. Or do we trust God in terms of no? Scripture tells me to not indulge in this sort of thing. And then I come to work and I can't relate with people. Sorry to put you on the spot, but Wait. that's a thought that I had. Like we, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But do we, do we do it as much as we can and not watch Game of Thrones, for example? And then we, we purposely not relate with people because of that. You know what I mean? It's difficult. 
Mm. Maybe we, may, maybe this is answered and we just read, read more of the Bible. And this, <laughs> this could be a classic, we're taking the verse out of context. Yeah, yeah, we could very well be taking the verse out of context. But I guess when I see don't copy the behaviors and the customs, I kind of see like, don't just, don't just follow blind, like don't blindly follow yeah. what others are doing. Like yeah. if you know, like maybe Game of Thrones was a bad example because it is pretty, it's a pretty hardcore. I, I mean, I don't watch it, but I just know that it's hardcore. Yep. And so like when, like, I think if when, if we know what we're consuming is not going to contradict ourselves, I think that is a way of being able to still hold your values highly and to still be relevant. Mm. Cause yeah. I mean like, man, I feel like we're going to get, this is going to cause mad hysteria, this topic, <laughs> but like when I think about it, like the Amish communities in the U S I don't think there are any in Australia, but I don't know. But like they shut themselves off from the world for that for for that exact reason. Like mm-hmm. don't co- like Romans twelve. I don't know if they really follow the New Testament very much. I assume they do. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. Okay, they shut themselves off. They uh they ride wagons with horses attached to it. They don't they don't have electricity. They they make their own butter. Like mm. taking it very literally. Yeah, and it's like I feel like. Hey, maybe there are conversion stories of people that lived in a secular world becoming Amish, but I haven't heard any. I, I, I personally haven't heard any, but I feel like that isn't relevant. Like they aren't, they aren't, they aren't helping anyone. I feel like the only reason why they're growing is because, you know, people are born into it. Yeah. However, I do have much respect for the Amish. <laughs> I just want to put that on record. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's quite amazing <laughs> how, how they can yeah. self no, no internet, themselves. no electricity. It's yep. pretty cool. It, it, mm. it, like, yeah, it's an interesting way they live. But mm. I don't believe it is the most effective form of evangelism. That's right. I agree with like, that. They've, they've completely shut them, them, themselves off from the rest of the world. Yeah. Like, we don't want to do that. Yeah. And again, respect to the Amish. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't start a sentence like that. <laughs> but what is our mission, I guess? If we, th- if we think about it. Well, our, we- our mission is, you know, to grow the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And. Yeah, I guess there's so many different directions you can take to achieve that goal. Yeah. And, you know, if, if your goal is to be like, yes, I need to be involved in everything possible so I can be as relatable as possible so I can save souls then you might be sort of contradicting Romans 12.2 in a way. But at the same time, um, you know, <laughs> if it's winning souls. <laughs> but I think, I think we... we I, th- I think we... There is a way to be a part of the culture without fully... Yep. Like, without changing who you are as a person. Yeah. And that is a, that is that is one thing that I really want to make clear. Like it's it would, I'm not talking about changing who you are to fit the culture, but being being who you are to reshape the culture. Yeah. So I mean, if like I guess I'll, I'll save this. I'll save the story for another time. But I was in a situation where, well, I'm in a spiritual state with God where I was put in a situation that I wouldn't normally be put in Mm. and it was, and it could possibly have been like, if it was, if, if I wasn't as strong in my faith, like maybe I probably wouldn't have like, I guess being it probably not necessarily changed me, but it would have been a night where I may have been like, Oh, I won't like let God kind of take control. And so like, I was put in a situation where you wouldn't expect a spiritual outcome, but that like I was hanging out with some buddies that night. It was like one of the most in the most unlikely of places. It was one of the most spiritual nights I've had in a very, very, very long time Wow! with, with a very, with a very unlikely group of people. Yeah. And like, that was so cool because I was like, Oh, I don't know if I like, it, it wasn't anything bad. Like I was just hanging out with, 
like five friends, but yep. I just wasn't expecting it to be such a godly night. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know if I should go. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go. And then, yeah, like it, like I was put in a situation where God, I guess, wasn't really present, but because my relationship with God grew, has, has grown so much, like God just kind of made his way into this, like made his way into the, to the hangs that we were having, like yeah. to the hangout. Yeah. Like it was, it was so awesome. Yeah. And like, I think that's one thing to, 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 to keep in mind, like not necessarily like don't avoid, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's such it's, a, I'm trying to, I'm trying to kind of say the right thing, but keep I, it I can't really, I, I can't really articulate it. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, I mean, God, I didn't expect God to be there, but because my relationship is so close with God, he was there with me the whole night and yeah. he allowed me or he gave me an opportunity to share my, my faith with mm. others. And that mm. was super cool. Mm. That is really cool. I've, I've yeah. had, yeah. Oh. oh, sorry. Sorry. What were you say? Oh no, I was just going to say, it's not, it's not like, that's not changing who you are. That's not yeah. contradicting who I was. It was changing the culture around me yeah you're the light in the uh the, i i the wasn't i wasn't the light okay. god was the light oh <laughs> <laughs> you called me out <laughs> very true um <laughs> yeah I've, I've had similar experiences and it probably it probably was similar with you if, if it wasn't to, if, it, if if i wasn't as relatable they wouldn't have happened mm. um and that being said you know, I, I personally feel like I'm at a pretty good place with God and my relationship with him and and all of that. So if if it's and I I've actually, you know, I felt more empowered to grow it and it's been it's been up for me. It's been it's been moving up. So if that's the way it's going, I think yeah, I think we're just reiterating what I've what I've, what you've said before. It, it's it is a little bit difficult sometimes, but if it's if you're constantly checking yourself, you might disagree with me, but I think if you're constantly looking at yourself and being like, it's not affecting my relationship, and my my values are being um, withheld, no, not withheld. Sorry, that's the wrong word to use. If my values aren't are like are strong, they're not being changed or shaped yeah, in a different way. I, I get what you're meaning. Yeah. Then then um, I think we're in a good place. Yeah, I think no, I think I think that's a good point. Mm. Um. Yeah. Do you want to know why this kind of topic is stuck out to me recently? Yeah. So, hold on, a little bit of context. I've been kind of struggling already. I've been struggling a little bit to think of like kind of topics that we can do like pretty easily. Yeah. But I mean, like I, I definitely feel like God has been putting a conviction on my heart to like create things. Okay. Like, like I re- like I really want to make a short film. Like, I think that would be so cool. And mm. I like, the thing is, I, I was saying Christian, <laughs> Christian movies are like a bad. Mm. And so, and like, instead of just complaining about it, like I want to, I want to, I want to make one that isn't as bad. But then again, <laughs> I have no experience. So it probably will be bad. And whether or not I actually follow through with it is another thing. But I think it'd be real. like, I think God is definitely convicting me to like create just like to create art, to share his love through music and videos mm. and this podcast. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's not, a, it's not a, like self glorifying. It's like God is, I feel like God is telling me like, Hey, do this. And like, yeah, yeah, I'll support you. And that's awesome. Like that made me think about like, I started, I've started watching a lot more movies for the the tech the technical stuff behind it not just like watching movies for the mind numbing enjoyment yeah like I'm actually like looking at things like oh how are they doing this how are mm. they doing that yeah and then and then that made me think like me watching these movies is that is that affecting my relationship with like am I consuming them too much where it's changing my thoughts mm. and so like that gave me a reality check yeah and so that's kind of where this idea for the or this is where the idea for the topic came from yeah 
Well, if if you could improve the standard of... <laughs> if you alone, Ted, could improve the standard of Christian media. <laughs> and sp- speaking of which, um, Waymaker, they might actually be listening to this, in uh, based out of Melbourne. They're part of the Seven Adventist Church. <laughs> um, they're actually... Their vision is to, from my understanding, to make the Netflix of Christian media, which would That's be... very cool. Yeah, it would be amazing if it's done right. Um, I think it's a, it's a big challenge um, mm. to, to be able to achieve it and for it to, to work quite well because of, because of that standard that's been set earlier. And let's be honest with ourselves. I think, you know, we're not, we're not kidding ourselves by saying like it's, it's, Christian media hasn't had the best rap. Can I just say something? Yeah. Like that is, that is an example of kind of what I was saying. It's not changing who you are to fit the culture. That is becoming a part of the culture to change it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like they, like wave, wave maker, way maker, way maker. Like yep. they are inserting themselves in a, in a category, I guess, of a streaming service, mm. which is heavily dominated by secular culture. And they are wanting to make a difference by showing the love of Jesus. And like, that is so cool because they are, they are being relevant while still remaining true to their values. Yeah. That's like, yeah, like that is so awesome. Yeah. And that is like, hits the nail on the head of like kind of this whole podcast. Yeah. Like that's what we want. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we had a, we had, I've had a thing about video games as well. We haven't talked about it much, but I think to, to sum it up, like for, for me, music, uh, movies, video games, I've actually, I think, been really enjoying them more so than I have in past years, the secular stuff, as well as the Christian stuff. I think I've been enjoying more both. I think the quality has increased in both. And it's really cool to see the Christian stuff grow in quality as well. Um, and I, you know, I guess that's what he, we're, we're here to do as well. We're here to answer questions people might have. Yeah. And because cause I think we are, I think, a little bit hitting it. I like to think we're hitting a bit of a niche that isn't, hasn't been covered in depth um, um, with, like quite broadly I yeah. think just to sort of yeah answer questions that we might have and other people might have and have conversations that aren't always mm. aren't always had yeah basically. I'm I'm at the point in my life where I mean okay I'm just going to say my original thought mm. I'm at the point in my life where I know what is good and what is not good for my spiritual life Yep. Now, there may be times where I might start watching something and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, but it might not be good for my spiritual health. Mm. But at the moment, like, I know that video games are very bad for my spiritual life. Not necessarily bad for everyone's, but for my spiritual life, I think I invest too much in it and then I get really emotional about it. And so I have learned that I can't play them. Like, I can't play multiplayer online games without getting frustrated and angry. And like, hey, frustration and anger does separate me from God. Yeah. Especially at something as dumb as a video, like as not serious. Mm. I guess trivial, right? Well, I mean, it's like getting mad at something that's not really affecting my life. Yeah. Like whether I win or lose, my life is going to stay the same. <laughs> yeah. So for the most part. Yeah. Like, unless you become a pro gamer. <laughs> That ship has sailed, my brother. That <laughs> was a dream once upon a time, not so much anymore. That's right. Haven't we all had that dream? <laughs> but yeah, like, and I guess that is that is a challenge for all people, like knowing mm. what is and what isn't good for your spiritual health. Yeah. And that's the question I literally had this this past weekend. Mm. Like I was questioning myself, like, is this good? How is it affecting me? And I think I'll just keep checking myself I've, I've said that a lot recently but <laughs> i think that's that's the way to do it um praying about it oh yeah definitely sure. prayer is a very important thing <laughs> and seeing where it goes from there is i think where i'm at yeah mm. yeah nice so i think i think that kind of wraps it up yeah. um this is this is a podcast that i'd actually really love to hear people's thoughts on for sure <clears throat> i would really like to hear what you have to say so if you're watching the broadcast of it, um, will it be saved as a comment or will it just be in the chat? So it will, that is, oh, 
I wish I knew the answer to this. <laughs> I, th- from what, from what I think it works is it'll stay there, but I'm okay. not 100% sure. Okay. I'm will it, will there be a chat sure replay? It stays there. Yes. Okay. I think it's how it works. A chat okay. replay. So there'll be a chat replay so we can go back and we can watch. Like, and we can comments. look at the comments. I think there's both. Yes. And there are comments as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would really like to hear what people think as opposed to like secular music in a, in a Christian lifestyle or secular mm-hmm. entertainment in a Christian lifestyle. Like I want to hear what you, what people think. Cause yeah. like I'm learning. Yeah. Um, and I want, I want to get like, I don't want to have just my own opinion. I want to hear others. Yeah. It's exactly the same with me. Like I, because I've had so many questions, it's, <laughs> it's been sort of on my mind a lot. I really do actually want to hear other people's opinions. Yeah. Um, and there's multiple ways like, yep, yeah, there's comments. If, if you're listening, you're probably not listening on Anchor because Anchor is actually our distribution platform. But if you want to go on Anchor, you can actually leave us a voicemail. We can actually play on the show. If you're, if you're game enough, <laughs> we can have, I guess, we can reply to your voicemail or we can have our own thoughts on, on what your thoughts are, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then there's the other ways. So we have the Facebook page, Morphin Vale MVY. We have our Instagram, which is MVC Youth. Yep. And we have our email address, contact youth at gmail.com. Yeah. So please, like, please let us know. And mm. then I guess the next one we do, if if people do respond, the next one we do, we can kind of discuss it for a bit and see what, what people think. Yep. Because I, I'm, yeah, I'm really interested to know yeah. what, what everyone's thoughts are on it. Mm. So the links are below if you're, if you're listening on YouTube um, and if whatever platform if you're on spotify the, the links will be there as well so you can just make your way there and, and if you want to get in touch you, you can do that uh, mm. quite easily yeah yeah so yeah thanks thanks for listening um i feel like we did go through go down a few rabbit holes but i Definitely. think i think you know we came to a bit of a roundabout answer yeah. about if it's not affecting us if it's not changing the way we think then like it will help us remain relevant in such a secular society. Yeah. To put it very like briefly. Yeah. But yeah, um, thanks for listening. Um, contact us through what Paul mentioned and we'll see you in the next episode. Yep. Thanks guys. See you later. And so I think if you are feeling burnt out, I think if you are feeling like, man, my contributions to church are actually a negative impact on me spiritually, Maybe you just need to take a step back and, and, and just be refreshed a little bit in your own spiritual walk and say, hey, why am I doing this? Why am I contributing in these areas?